Hello and welcome to another episode of Han Bin's BMW DTM. We are finally getting places. Look how cool this is starting to look. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Look at this. Doesn't that look great? It's awesome. Let me show you a little bit of the wireframe. You know, we keep it everything really simple. You know, we're gonna add these little like fender inlets and this like hood like scoop inlet things. And, uh, and it's gonna look good. Look at that. Let's see, we're gonna keep everything really chill, very loose. Um, but more importantly, you know, we just gotta focus on the results. Sometimes, you know, I just finished this. I'm very, very proud of it. And you know, I was kind of like looking at this, and I was like, "Ooh, that's nice." But then I kind of went back, and I'm like, "Ooh, look at that. Look at this. Look, look at these highlights. Look how they just go through the surface." See, remember I told you guys about this, right? Just adding that little S. You know, when it when it's when we're talking about just surfaces, it's a very subtle change. But any change in the reflections are they always like come out, right? So so it's really it gives it these really cool, like the light plays with the surface so well. You know, then you mix it with some little aggressive inlets and stuff like that. Then now we're now we're we're making magic, baby. We're making some good magic. So um, yeah, this episode. We're gonna, you know, take the hood, add all these little big inlets. We're gonna add all these like little, like, you know, accessories, uh, just to kind of get it out of the way, and also just to make it look cool. Look, this is really cool. Yeah, so I'm super excited. This is gonna be a great episode. We're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna do these two things, and um, yeah, let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a fillet between the front glass and the hood. And since the hood is made out of two different surfaces, I'm gonna add a curve on surface using the insert tool right down the middle. And then I'm gonna use my fillet tool on top of that so that I can use edge align. And it is, and then that, that fillet is gonna be structured exactly on that like, you know, that those two surfaces break. You know, it's a very common like workflow of mine. Okay, I'm gonna slow it down to uh, real time now cause there's gonna be a bunch of steps and I really wanna like, make sure you guys see this workflow because it's a very common thing I have to do throughout my career, right? I have these two surfaces, I'm adding those fillets, right? And then I, right now I'm gonna start adding the second set of surfaces, right? I'm gonna untrim the glass and then I'm gonna trim it on the other side. So first I'm gonna like make sure that I get the right size fillet I want because I'm gonna delete the history because once you untrim everything, it's got a lot of times the the fillet tool goes crazy on you, so I don't wanna like deal with that. So every time when I'm moving to the next set, I make sure to delete the history, which is like right there. You know, it's just a quick like, you know, note to me. And then I, I you know, untrim it and then trim out the other edge, right? And then I'm gonna use the fillet tool again um, and I'm gonna use the same numbers and it's still not gonna be lined up. This is very common. A lot of times, even you might, a lot of people might think they should be, but that's just not how, how it works, you know? So, so many times that edge is not gonna be exactly, you know, uh, on point. So what I gotta do is untrim everything and then use my alignment tool to uh, make sure that that one fillet is touching that other fillet, right? And then I kind of realized that, that it's not really the right angles. You see how it's like jogging up there? So I'm like, okay, I don't like how it's bending down. I don't like the result that the fillet tool gave me. So what I'm gonna do is isolate that, that glass surface, uh, delete that, that curve on surface the fillet tool made, and then I'm gonna use the previous one and extend it out. And then that's gonna give me a, a much like cleaner sort of like surfacing solution, right? Then I could delete that. And then here in the bottom, it's not completely lined up, but I like that line. So I'm gonna duplicate that curve, uh, change the pivot point, and then put it right so it's lined up, and then untrim that surface, and then extend that, that curve to make sure I hit that edge, and then reproject that, and then trim that away, right? That's the importance of uh, hockeys because I just did like a million things in like 10 seconds, right? Then I'm gonna isolate all of them, and I'm gonna press uh, my B key to do a, a blend curve, and then get that edge. Then all I gotta do is use the square tool to add a surface into this corner. And I want you to pay attention to there where it says position failed, right? I wanna, I wanna, sh I wanna show you guys how I solve these sorts of issues. Cause to me, it seems like there's enough degrees so that that doesn't happen. So what I'm gonna do is untrim all those surfaces, delete, that, delete the, the curve on surface. 
and then I'm going to use the project align tool, well the align tool with project settings, and then that's going to add a curve on surface there, and that's going to make everything like positional, right? And same thing here, see how it's not positional, but I'm going to delete that curve on surface, and then I'm going to let the align tool make a curve on surface and then that makes it positional and I didn't have to add any more degrees you know and then I, I since I deleted the curve on surface before I have to add it on the other side I'm gonna use the project tool again and then trim away and then there we go I had I used the same amount of degrees but before it wasn't reaching positional and now it looks good and you know everything everything is great this is something I do all the time so you know um, anytime you don't you can't find positional it's really if you just untrim it and then reproach and then do like a positional project align most of the time it'll probably you know end up end up fixing that that corner here i'm adding the big like sort of like radius in the corner of this hood element using my blend curves and i'm just gonna select that edit point and then move that arrow and then sometimes to, to like kind of like double check that everything is good i might align it so i'm gonna use a curvature align tool with that curve and that's going to destroy the history of my blend curve, but then it's going to add a new new alignment history, right? And here I forget to, um, you know, I forget to delete the history, and look what happens. You see how that it kind of fucked up? See, see in that corner, and I'm like, what? What the hell happened? And then now I untrim it, and then the whole my curves are completely messed up, and that's kind of like one of the reasons why I always delete history like my workflow is like not there's no history in my workflow usually you know um, once I'm done with a part or with a, a history tool I just uh, delete it and then you know kind of keep going so now that I know that's lined up again I'm gonna select it delete the history this time and then now when I trim it it's not gonna like do any weird like errors or anything like that you know so that's kind of um, there's a lot of pros and cons to being very you know history driven or like like someone like me who doesn't like history at all and I try to avoid it at all cost uh, and honestly it to me like both both like sort of working like you know I've seen a lot of people that their workflow is 100% history driven and and it's a uh, it's you know it's a great workflow it's just I'm not something I like do on a on professional or personal level all right so now let's start to speed things up a bit because we got a long ways to go so i'm just using my insert tool to sort of add the thicknesses and that hanbin wanted a lot of times when i'm rebuilding hanbin stuff or any designer stuff i basically kind of take the general idea of it and i sort of try to you know clean everything up you know whatever curves i can make consistent or you know how they separate make it more you know cleaner it, that's kind of like what I'm doing right now, making sure that that edge has a nice constant flow, that when it goes up, the thickness is very like, you know, direct. And then now I could discard that trim surface. Now that I have this sort of like hole here, I'm gonna, I wanna start developing the inside surface, right? So I'm gonna get a curve and make sure that where that, where that surface ended in Hanbin's model, I'm gonna cut it there and, you know, and kind of start off like that, right? So I'm gonna untrim it and then I'm going to project it. But then from this view, I could tell it's a little too straight. So I'm just going to add a little bit of curvature and like bend it up towards the end. And then using my trim convert tool, I quickly made like that surface you see here. And then that surface I can move around to like, you know, twist it in. And as long as I don't touch the two closest, you know, CVs in the, or the holes, then it's always going to be curvature because it was based off that surface, right? Using our trim convert tool. I'm sort of using Hanbin's model as like a sort of like a guide of what he wants and then I'm just kind of applying it the cleanest I can and the easiest I can to this surface right because a lot of times if I just you know minimize certain radiuses or you know change certain uh, you know relationships it makes my job a lot easier and it's still basically the design that he wanted it's not going to be exactly the same design but a lot of times that's sort of like my job to sort of clean up what he did and you know once he kind of goes over it and he if he likes it then you know it's a it's a great way to kind of like speed up the process you know here's a quick way to make a clean like transitional surface off a trimmed on surface like curve right because i need to i need to move that rail across that right and and so what i'm going to do is extend that back rail it again and see i get this really messed up one and then i'm just using that that little corner to rail the other side then i'm going to clean up both of these surfaces eliminating the spans 
and then I'm gonna use a more traditional like surfacing technique between them. Like here, I'm just using a freeform blend. So now I have a nice clean like transitional surface between them, right? And then here when I railed it, it came out really clean because I used the insert tool. So that's another reason why I always use the insert tool. It um if you rail it, it's gonna be very clean and it's not gonna have all those spans, you know. But um even if you get the spans, you can kind of do tricks like how I was doing back there to sort of like you know fix them. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do this like world edge. So I'm gonna do a bunch of things to try to like figure that out. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grab that surface, copy paste, and then I'm like, okay, well that doesn't really relate to the bottom of those, okay? So then I check these out from the edge, see if they are like lined up, and I'm like, okay, they're kind of the same curvature, and so I'll just skin those and make a default, and then I'm gonna use that top surface to trim convert the bottom surface. So I'm gonna extend this out, and then project, and then change the degrees so that it could, I could trim convert it and then I'll have more like you know uh, degrees and then I'm gonna do a freeform blend here but then I realize the edges aren't lined up so I'm like okay wait I, they're not lined up so I have to go back and then do do a, a intersect uh, curve on surface using these edges and then I'm gonna extend them out and and then use the the trim convert tool again to like you know now now I have that edge is directly lined up and then I could do another freeform blend and now we're getting a little closer and then I move that I move the 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 side one shapes a little more you know aggressively to kind of give me more like room and and you see see how it's kind of like twisting all weird like that in the in the second CVs in the second holes and I'm like okay well I don't want that but I do like where we're going so I'm just gonna quickly use the edges to surface a new one and then that's a little more balanced and now, now I'm gonna use my align tool to align it to that surface and then there now it gave me a nice little clean like you know rolled edge um, but I also in the back of my head right now what's going on is uh, I'm thinking okay what's gonna happen once it rolls over you know to the underside you know if I had a fillet there I know it's gonna cause me a lot of problems so I'm like even though that was a nice clean edge I was like, okay, you know what? Instead of that, I'm actually gonna make it so it only does it like 90 degrees, you know? So I only I only need to basically like add a fillet like right there. So first I add a little sidewall. And now I'm gonna use my fillet tool to try to add a surface right there that 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 lands right on the edge of that of the underlying surface, right? That way it stays at 90 degrees and it'll make my life a lot easier. So here when I hit 40, I got close, but I wanna get even closer. But if I do that, I might fail the, the, the fillet tool. So what I'm gonna quickly do is grab this edge and extend it out. And now that's gonna give me a little more breathing room. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, query edit the fillet and then make it a little bigger. And then now I can kind of, that's kind of already like almost perfectly on the line. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just delete, you know, delete the actual surface I made and then I'll use my positional align tool to the edge. And then there, now I have a nice like, consistent like fillet that's going through there and I know that once I add a, a little smaller fillet going around there all of it it's going to be a lot easier for me. Here I just want to clean that edge and it's a freeform blend so I'm just going to query edit and then change the side shape to a little more uh, aggressive and then to make sure that that edge is perfect I'm gonna first delete the history untrim the that surface uh, delete the the curve on surface reproject that edge and then trim again. So now I know I have a nice straight line. And once I'm happy with that, I move on to the transitional surface between these two hoods. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start adding curves to where I think the fillet is gonna wanna, or the transit or the freeform blend is gonna wanna like be. So I'm just, uh, you know, just kind of guessing the separation and then I'm gonna project those two curves and then trim them out. Then I'm gonna use the freeform blend to kind of just see what we got, you know, like a lot of times when you do it really quick like that, you know, um, the relationship between the surface is good enough where, you know, maybe a quick freeform like that makes sense. I also want to check the relationship in the bottom, right, in this little edge. So I'm just going to do a quick square tool and then make sure that there's curvature on the edges and see just how it relates, you know, and luckily that, that bottom corner is really clean, you know. Now I go back to this because I'm not liking how those CVs are bending. And I actually, now that I look back at this video, I feel like I, I could do a better solution there. 
but um but for right now let's remember i'm always trying to go as quickly as possible so i'm gonna do a freeform blend again but instead of you know edge align or connect ends i'm going to use default and then i'm going to extend that surface out so at least i don't have those like tortured cvs which i really always try to avoid in my model but for like the speed that we're doing this and you know the the part it is i'm not really too worried about it you know because whenever i'm whenever i'm uh, modeling and you know you're sort of chasing some perfect curvature or some perfect transition you know a lot of times i'll be like okay i'm not really exactly happy you know here you'll see the difference like it, it's probably less than like 0.1 millimeters but in my head i'm like okay i might not be exactly happy with that but um you know why don't I, i'll just leave it there for right now and then if it really bugs me later when i'm like you know i have a full picture i'll come back there and you know maybe massage those cvs more change the structure a bit but it were for right now i'm like you know what this is kind of like good enough and i kind of keep going with the model and it's funny because in this video recording, you know, I do that, I do a quick fillet in this corner, you know, cause it's quick and easy, but I could tell in the back of my head, I'm still like really not happy with that result. And then you'll see right now that I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get this fillet out of the way, but we gotta, we gotta focus back on this little corner, you know, I'm like, okay, how much is it? Like how high is it bending different? You know, <laughs> and it's like, it just makes me laugh because as uh, it's, it's so, it's so hard for me to just like, let it go, you know, and I'm just like, uh, and, and, I, and, you know, I'm even checking the zebra stripes and all that. And I'm just like, it's really, it's really, uh, it, it really fascinates me. Like looking at myself model, because it's like, I can, I, it's so ingrained in me, like a, like a class a, like super perfect surfacing that I, like, it's really difficult to just stop, you know, and here I'm actually gonna, uh, start to add a material. And I wanted to show you guys how I did that cool little, like, very aggressive um, uh, car paint, right? Because, like, in the beginning, it was a little more, like, reflective in this video. And then here, I'm just adding the aluminum. And then I'm going to build another, like, paint material. But before I do that, I just quickly project this edge and trim out that little corner. And now I'm going to try to make the, the scene as pretty as possible. So first I'm going to just start playing around with different environments and this environment, that hall, I use it all the time. And I was kind of surprised how like blown out it was, you know, and I'm like, okay, that's probably has to do more with the shader. So I'm actually going to like slow it down. So you guys see exactly what I do with the environment. Cause it's like a quick, like mini environment material tutorial. So the first thing we gotta do is move the ground plane. So let's go to Windows Display, Hardware Shade, and then there, there's an Edit Environment, and then this little menu is gonna pop up. You go to your ground plane, and then you go to something like negative 350, and I'm gonna open up my wheels so I can kind of like get a better idea of exactly where it's sitting, and it's still 350 is just a little too low, so I'm gonna go back to my Edit Environment and maybe go something to like negative 320, and that kind of gives me a good like starting point. So now I kind of, you know, that paint is too like blown out. So I'm gonna uh, edit it and then make the color just a little bit darker. And then the specularity, I'm gonna take it like halfway. And then the more important part is the eccentricity. And see, I just move that to 0 0.2. And then that gives me a very like uh, a shader that, that moves, that, that changes a lot with the form. You know, it's a lot more like dynamic. And then the rest is just normal, you know, making my tires just a little darker. And um, and then I'm gonna go back to the edit environment and I'm gonna eliminate that reflection because even though it looks kind of cool, it really, to me, is kind of um, distracting. So I just take that, I uncheck reflection, and then once you move it around, everything's good. And um, then we get back to modeling. So now we're slowly going to start solving this nice little fillet here, right? Because it's really, you need to be really focused on where, you know, how big these fillets are going to be. And if you're going to do edge align and, you know, the, the side of your surfaces. So here, obviously the first time I'm going to fail and do the wrong side. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I do it again and make sure that arrow is pointed up. And right now they're both in default and I make one edge edge align. And then I accidentally deselect the other one and it kind of destroys everything. So we go revert and then I do that again and I make sure that my end is default and then I select that, that edge, right? Then I isolate that surface and then extend out. And then that way I could trim that out and, you know, slowly start moving my way through this, you know, problem here. I'm just edge aligning it, edge aligning it. And then, I, and then I'm lining it up so it's as clean as possible. Then I'm gonna insert a, a curve on surface 
based off that edge, right? And then from here, I could just use my square tool to line everything up and then remember to make curvature on that four side and then I'm gonna play with the boundary blends to make everything as clean as possible, you know, or like, you know, whatever seems a better distribution of the, of the CVs. With fillets this small, you know, in a, like a sort of like a hood accessory, I try to keep, you know, everything as, uh, I try to aim for curvature, but if I get tangency, especially in between these two, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more than okay with that. You know, it's a, it's a really tiny part and no one's gonna like super hyper zoom into it, you know? So here I'm just realigning the edges using my project align. And then I'm gonna do a bunch of CV manipulation to try to get tangency between these two, right? So I'm gonna get all those CVs and I'm gonna use my CV uh, control tool and then just keep moving them off the normal and off those sliders, right? Like I did last time. And I got tangency there real quick, but I thought I didn't really like how, um, you know, how much I bent that CV down, you know? So I'm here I'm just using it based off the normal. And then that gives me a nice, like clean, you know, surface. And uh, even though it's not curvature, I'm not really, I'm not too worried about it, especially when we're, we're going to make it like a matte silver or like a matte black. You know, if you see it like that, it's really, it's more than good enough for, for what we're trying to do. So then we have to do that all over again, but on the other side. And since the condition changed, I want you guys to pay attention to how different the solution came about, right? First, I'm going to do a quick fillet and I'm going to make one edge edge align. And then from here, I kind of noticed that I can kind of cut that corner to make an edge line fillet there too. So first I'm gonna add a curve right there, eliminate the old one, project this sort of like corner of the surface, trim that away, and then I'm gonna use my, my fillet tool here and make sure they're both edge aligned. And then that gives me a, a really clean like fillet in that, in, that, in that spot that I could sort of work off of. And then I try to do the same thing on the other side, right? So I trim that out and I try to I try to add a fillet there and it just doesn't work. So I do what I always do. I get, use my insert tool and add a curve on surface based on the surface, right? Then I duplicate this edge and I extend it using extend uh, a non-merge. And I could tell that it's really close to, you know, that edge. So I'm like, okay, what happens if I align it, right? And then it has this little itty bitty jog and I should be okay with that because it's so subtle and it's so like little, but it's really, it's bugging me. So then I'm like, okay, that's almost good. But if I just lift up this little CV, I, it can make like the distribution so much cleaner, which is really like nothing. And I'm like, kind of in my head, I'm like, why am I even doing that? Like, see, just moving that up and made it just a little cleaner. And then I can, I can hide, I can delete all the history, uh, delete all the old curves, trim, and then reproject that edge and then trim away that surface. And now I have, um, you know, a more, a cleaner spot for like the rest of the, of the model, right? Okay, so here I'm gonna, about to, I'm about to do some pretty complex stuff. So I want you guys to pay attention. I'm gonna try my best to kind of like tell you what's going on through my workflow, right? So first I'm gonna do a freeform blend, but instead of making both of the sides curvature, I'm gonna make side one positional just to kind of get me a surface there, right? And then I'm gonna extend it back and then I'm gonna make sure it hits that, that edge. And now I kind of wanna, you know, make see how they relate to each other. So I add a quick like uh, a square tool and then I could tell it's not related to each other and I'm gonna have to rebuild like that freeform blend I used. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually make it five degrees and then I'm gonna duplicate that edge and then I'm gonna rebuild it with a square. So I'm gonna duplicate that edge, delete it, and then I'm gonna use my square tool. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I could use that curve as a way to control the whole the whole thing. You know, so that's exactly what's going on right now. I'm just gonna add the square tool, make sure that the conditions are right, you know, and that it's it's touching the, the trim surface. And, uh, and then I'm just basically gonna be manipulating this like sort of curve to, um, and I don't know why that little arrow comes out. It's positional, you know? I make sure everything's curvature and then, you know, play with the boundary blends to make it as clean as possible. And now once I surface that, that square in, the, in between those two, I can really start to, you know, hyper, you know, uh, uh, CV control the main slab to make everything as, as good as possible, right? So here I'm just kind of looking at the, the, other, the other surfaces CV distribution and I'm trying to match it. So see how I'm like, like pushing everything out and I'm using the other surface to kind of like guide me, right? 
and then now I can kind of uh, I do a quick freeform blend and then uh, I don't like how it came out but I do like the edges of it so I'm just gonna quickly you know line it up even more it's because you see how it has that little jog that like kind of gives me a, a place to move them right so I'm kind of like doing some really big this is really more, more high level refinement honestly like I do I did that a lot I still do that a lot but like you know I'm kind of using the both of the surfaces to kind of find a good in-between spot you know and then I just resurface it with the square tool and then now at this point I've already like invested a bunch of time in it and I'm like you know what that's definitely like it has to be good enough you know like I don't like it's just a it's a it's a little corner and for some reason I think I went a little too hard on this in the sense of like you know it's such a like why do I have to do that much stuff you know and now we move over to these little side like uh, fender like vents you know so I'm just gonna grab them and I'm gonna elevate them a bit so I could see them and then I'm just gonna start taking proportions from that right so I'm gonna use my insert tool to add a curve on surface right in the middle and kind of you know even though I'm not kind of like doing exactly how he did it I'm doing it more based on the surrounding surfaces right that's why I always use like the insert tool because um, you know that way I know that that line is in between the edges of that surface now I add a curve that I'm gonna project onto this fender surface to establish that edge and as I do that I kind of realize that mine is a little too skinny you know based on what Han Bin wanted right because in the end even though I'm cleaning everything I really want to get the general proportions down right so I'm just gonna grab this little this little previous model and then rotate it in place just to make sure that everything is good and then I'm gonna use my insert tool again and now I have a nice like thicker you know vent area now that I have the general proportions down I could hide away Han Bin's model and then I could start projecting these curves onto the fender and before I do that I'm gonna add just a little bit of curvature towards them right and then I could project them and here I'm gonna do again you know how I always do like a little trim convert uh, I do a little trim convert there and actually we end up not using that later but you know it's always good to kind of like see see you know my process and now I need to add this like edge right so I'm gonna add a tubular offset and I'm also gonna make it a little bit thicker than what Humbin did because when I every time I saw Humbin's model I always thought that like little edge was a little too small so I'm using the tubular offset to kind of just add just a little more like maybe double the thickness just so that it has it feels more like stable you know a lot of times in my designs and when I'm th when I'm thinking about volumes I don't like like sharp little things sticking out you know without any like substance you know so I figured that's a little too small so now I do something like that and now I'm gonna use my trimming tools to kind of like you know trim everything away and keep whatever I need so here I get a little tricky like what I do before I trim it is I copy that surface and then I trim out what I don't want and then I paste the untrimmed surface again and trim out what I do want because sometimes it's a little easier for me to just kind of do that see here I just pasted it and now I'm gonna trim away and only keep what I want you know that like that inside um, uh, vent area right and here once I unhide everything and then I, I delete that old surface we don't need anymore and that once I paint them the right color you can kind of start seeing how I'm building these sort of like fenders and if you notice I didn't add the curves yet I didn't add any of that and we're about to but I always always build extremely rough edged first and then slowly start to kind of like add all the fillets right and this is like a little mini project now I want to add this sort of like indent right so we're gonna approach it like we approach every project right some sort of like fundamentals you know one of the things I always try to preach is look for stuff around to use you know like don't don't just put a curve anywhere if there's an edge you could copy and paste and use then use that you know and then once you have that all nice and perfect the, the you know design doesn't isn't all straight and you know offsets like then we start you know moving everything around you know here I just move up the curve so I can see them a little easier and then I grab this edge duplicate it and then I move it forward and then I connect it to that edge and then I rotate it so same here same thing here I wrote I connect it to that edge and then I rotate it you know that way it has a bit of a taper and and the curvature is all the same and it gives me the cleanest possible like sort of uh, execution here you know I always try to like emphasize that you know like always try to make things t relate with each other and in the end it makes everything just a lot easier on the eye can anybody guess how I'm gonna get that surface in the middle that little trimmed out surface what would I, what's gonna rate what's Ray gonna do what tool will he use it's gonna it starts with a T trim trim 
trim something trim something that's right trim convert like always oh my god i'm so goddamn predictable but uh you know sometimes it works you know things just work for, for a reason you know it makes everything real easy I'm doing the exact same stuff i was doing before right uh, you see you see me do this you see me do this you know don't touch those don't touch the two holes before that you know because that keeps our curvature and then that makes everything nice and pretty we're gonna use our extend tool to move it back uh, use our extend tool to move it you know a little inboard and then all we really have to do is start skinning those two edges and we got we got something going you know some some good and then here's where I realized I forgot just a little bit of a thick corner that Humbin did and honestly when I see the end result I don't know if this was really necessary you know having that little a little like flat right there before it bends in you know but I figured it might give it a little more structure it might make it feel a little more like you know uh, constructed so um, so you know a lot of times it's worth it you know and at this time I don't trim convert I actually just use the previous surface and then use my align tool right you know sometimes I you know Ray maybe Ray isn't 100% predictable you know sometimes he likes to get crazy with it right all right, so I'm going to slow it down for these tricky areas because I want you all to guess what's Ray going to do because he doesn't find alignment in this edge, right? Okay, so what's Ray going to do? What's Ray going to do? First, let's do a regular align where the alignment type is edge, right? So there an alignment type is edge and then I'm going to add more degrees and I'm going to I'm going to make sure positional influence is at one. I'm going to add more degrees and I don't get it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to untrim delete the, the curve on surface and then project and I still don't get it. So then I add more degrees and then I still don't get it. So see, I changed the vector option from normal to Z. And then that, that gets me, because I go down to five and then I go I change it to Z and then that gets me a clean curvature using only a five degree surface, which to me is still kind of heavy. You know, so I'm like, I'm like, all right, like I feel, I feel like that's such a simple little uh, edge. It should be a little easier, but I want you guys to check out this little problem, right? I'm skinning them. And you see how it's skinning the other edge of it see and it's like it's like it's an it's not that common of an error and i'm just kind of like moving the options around i'm trying to figure out why that skin is going all the way over there when i'm when i'm clicking on the closer one right so let me try again i'm gonna delete it select that and then select that and then for some reason it just keeps going that so what am i going to do i'm going to duplicate that that edge and then i'm going to skin that duplicate you know that's like a quick way remember if alias is giving you shit Try to just keep it as simple as possible for the software. And if that means, you know, duplicating an edge or how I do it when I trim a certain surface to get edge aligned, you know, it's really, it, it helps out alias, you know, which I know is really like that shouldn't happen, but that's really the case. And a lot of times when the tool doesn't work, what you have to do is think of ways to kind of help it work, you know, and that, and with that one is obviously a nice little easy, just duplicate the curve and, you know, skin that. So after this, I'm thinking about, you know, surfacing all the radiuses here, right? So I'm just kind of closing it up by adding a surface there. And here you're going to see me add like a little lip in the back end of that like hole, right? And um, and later down, you're going to see how, how uh, you know, how I use that. But it's kind of like this kind of showcases how sometimes when I'm modeling this, it's sort of like in the back of my head, I'm thinking about all the steps and what I'm going to need. And then here I'm like, okay, I'm going to need a little strip here so that that's going to bend around and you guys will see what happens. But, um, but yeah, that's the whole reason why this happens. But before I do that, I also want to add all the other little blends here, you know, so I'm actually going to fast forward a little bit because all I'm doing here is just basically finding these little corners and then aligning them, you know, I'm using the blend curve and then I'm using the blend curve toolbox to, you know, align all of those to the sides. Right. But nothing. And then after that, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to untrim and um and reproject everything i'll take this little free moment to say thanks for all those nice comments and those nice emails um i'm really glad these videos are helping you guys out now back to that good good that high level stuff right what are we going to do first first we're going to make it easier for our algorithm right so we're just going to insert a curve there we're also going to insert where that curve, that blend curve is ending and where it's ending on that side. And then I'm going to trim out, get that little corner, trim that out. I'm going to use a blend curve between these two and then I'm going to skin them. And then I'm going to use my align tool to make sure that there's curvature between them. And that gives me a really quick like sort of surface right there, right? And, um, and see now it has a nice transition. And then all I have to do is there untrim that one 
and keep those side surfaces and now it kind of looks like it's a, like a hole inside but then it bends nice and smooth to the inside and you know you kind of get the best of both worlds and now we're going to that tough stuff so remember to save your file whenever I'm doing these sorts of uh, fillets I always make sure first that it's on default and then I add the edge align because I'm not really really sure what side is going to be edge align and I don't want my like computer to freeze so I, I always go back to default and then add uh, edge align and then once I like that I delete the history and extend those surfaces out you know here's me deleting it and then I grab those and then I use my extend tool to extend those curve on surfaces out and then I trim it out and now I have this little trim remember to trim this out and if it didn't reach all the way just extend it out and then same thing here extend it out trim it out and now I still need to like realign those to make sure that they're in the edge right and then uh, so I do that I make sure that I bend them back just to keep them, keep them clean and um, and then that gives me a nice like sort of area to make the rest of it right I gotta do it on the other side as well use my curvature line make sure it's all the way to the edge and then skew it so that it's relatively clean and then all I gotta do is use my square tool and this is such a like a gradual change that you know just changing the 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 curvature is pretty like you know simple and then ch and playing with the boundary blend it gets you really close to to the a nice clean result and let's remember these little fender flares or these little fillets inside the fender flares are really not that important at all you know so i'm not gonna and also i'm kind of like in the end of like my work day you know when it comes to when i was modeling this so i'm like okay i'm not gonna go too hard on this i'm just gonna make sure that it's tangent and you know move so i start moving those cvs around to find tangency real quick and uh you know once i do i'm like okay i feel like that's enough for for this corner you know especially since it's gonna be like a probably like a dark plastic not plastic but like maybe a carbon fiber or whatever but it's probably gonna be matte so it's not really too important and then basically all i gotta do is is the other edge kind of use the same the same the same you know workflow and um and that's it see it wasn't too hard was it you know these little transitions and stuff all you're really doing is using the square tool moving around the boundary blends then using the the cv control to kind of like you know make sure that all that is nice and and uh, aligned and and then there we go we have a finished result so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the next one, we're gonna finish up the front end. And then on the next one, we're gonna finally start moving into the body side. That's probably gonna be a whole lot of other videos. So there's a long ways to go. Um, and uh, you know, thank you for joining me on this journey. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And, um, and yeah, thanks for all the comments and messages and emails. And I hope you guys have a nice week. Bye-bye.